This is not an illusion. This is the actual dust and dirt built up in the back of this CRT. Watch this. It's almost as if it was smoked in. Look at that. Alright folks, this is not an illusion, this is the actual dust and dirt built up in the back of this CRT, watch this. This dust is because of the fans, I'm, I'm convinced that the excessive amount of dust of this is because of these intake fans, which are a great thing to cool the monitor down as it's running, because there's three of them inside. But if they're intake fans and there's dust in the area and it's not cleaned, it sucks the dust in through the main intake fan and then just soots it in here and builds up over years. I gotta get the air compressor ready, get the brush kits ready, and I need to get a lot of this dust out of here. Wow, so that was a good two hours of cleaning just to get the soot all off all this stuff. I had to get my professional commercial grade uh, air compressor and blow for a long time. I used all kinds of cleaning brush kits that are ESD brushes. This is one of the best CRT designs for internally that I've seen in all my experience working on them. Uh, just to give you a little bit of information on why I say that real quickly. Uh, first off, this is a, a secondary deflection board that we recapped that's over here on the right side. And what the way this monitor is normally set up is this over here where the flyback is, is going to be a really high heat area normally. You've got a lot of ICs, same thing with this heat sink plate, a lot of heat sinks over here. Well, this gigantic fan runs at 2000 revolutions per minute or something, and it's always got to be running or the uh, CRT will not power on. It sits right here and sucks in cool air from the outside and just constantly blows in that area, forcing cool air up. And then what that does is that sends the hot air on here up and naturally out the vents. And then there's another fan that sits up back here to help cool. And then another fan that sits over here on top of this other power supply to help cool. So that cooling uh, actually helps this whole monitor uh, maintain a lot of the integrity of the parts. Of course, as I said before, it also causes an immense amount of dust to possibly build up if you don't clean it. Now, these capacitors are amazing, guys. I went through here and looked at the capacitors on the chassis, and they are just a beautiful, high quality. Most of them are Nishikon, Rubicon, and then KMH, just some beautiful capacitors in here. 
And um, other than the deflection board and some of the uh, neck board capacitors, I wouldn't even, uh, we're not even gonna go in here and replace a lot of these because they are so good. There's so much life left on them. Let's go now. I'm gonna put the rest of the boards back in here and we'll go look at it one more time when it's reassembled and uh, get some tests going. Here we are, put it all back together. Got plugged up, S-Video again, stereo audio, and then just the power AC cord plugged in. But everything else is put back together. And I did do a little bit more research. These fans are actually gonna be blowing out. They're not intake fans, like, or they're not, they weren't set up to be um, intake. They were set up to be exhaust. So I was incorrect when I said that earlier, just in case I wanna go back over that. Those fans should be blowing out, and then this would blow out, and then that one will blow out of the power supply. But uh, let me take you around and show you everything before we finally turn it on after all our servicing. This is definitely a moment where things can be a little bit nerve-wrecking, but it's, my goodness, a thousand times cleaner and quite beautiful compared to what it was. Okay, let's just take a look here at this I.O. board, the audio and video, really cleaned up nicely. Now one of the important upgrades we've been working on is trying to get some new fans installed in here. We've got again our three fans and they're still pretty loud even after cleaning them. And what I've got here is a premium Noctua fan that we're gonna be installing. Now the, the interesting thing is, is there's an alarm system on this board and if the fans are not working or don't meet a specific requirement, which is 2000 RPMs, then the monitor will just turn it completely off. The problem is it still will trip the alarm if you just sit there and directly input the cable into the header. Uh, even though it meets the specification, I was not able to get it to work without doing this little trick. So here's our connection going into the monitor and you'll notice the yellow alarm cable coming from the fan has been severed. And then over here we've got a splice the black is the ground cable. What we've actually done is spliced our alarm cable coming from the monitor to ground. And all that's going to do is trip that alarm to let it know when current's going that it's actually uh, being activated. And then it will let the fan just run uh, like it should. So we're going to have to do this alteration for the other two fans to install them. Once we get these fans installed, it should be a lot quieter then obviously when we started. Let's get our splice here covered. Now we're ready to mount this on the power supply. And then we'll have to get the other two fans ready. I well, finished installing all the Noctua fans. So first we've got 80 millimeter and that 80 millimeter over there. And then we've got the 92 millimeter down here. All right, I've got it turned on. So if it stays on for five seconds, then that means the fan alarms are not kicking in and that we're good to go. But wow, that's a lot quieter. That's going to do it for today's episode. Please make sure you check back with the channel in a couple weeks for the final installment on the NEC XM2960. We'll be going through calibrations, the finished product, and how the fans ultimately work after some serious testing. And if you do need any more details on the fan modification, I do have a specific video for that linked in the description. There's also a linked playlist for all the prior videos 
on the NEC XM2960 and the restoration process to this point. So please go back and refresh if you're missing any information or want to check out anything else. And one last special thank you to everybody for subscribing and all the Patreon members who've been kind enough, like Tom, to send in their wonderful CRTs here to be serviced so we can all learn more about them and uh, document them online. Thanks again, everybody. I will see you all next time with some more retro content. <music>